Hi, I'm Lucy Ellis, Executive Editor of Invivo, part of the Farmer Intelligence Group, and I'm here at Bio Europe Spring in Vienna, and I'm joined by Gilead Rade, the Chief Operating Officer of Red Hill Biopharma, an Israeli company focused on the anti-infective space. So thank you for joining me. Thank you. So you recently had some phase three top line data uh, out for the company for one of your pipeline candidates. So perhaps you could elaborate a bit more on the findings there. Certainly. Uh, we recently announced at the end of 2018 top line data from a phase three study, confirmatory phase three study for Talisia, our flagship product for treatment of Helicobacter pylori infection. Helicobacter pylori infection is a widespread infection, highly prevalent, uh, and it uh, is associated with gastric uh, ca cancer and with peptic ulcer disease. So uh, the problem with Helicobacter pylori is that resistance to standard of care antibiotics have been evolving so that current standard of care is not lo no longer effective in eradicating Helicobacter pylori. Talisia in the phase three study has shown very high levels of effectiveness yeah. and is now positioned to be best in class, first line new standard of care for treatment of Helicobacter pylori infection. And what are the next steps then? You've got the phase three data, it's all looking positive. Where do you move now? Yes, yeah, so based on that data and based on our discussions with FDA, we are planning to submit a new drug application uh, in the coming quarter. And we have qualified infectious disease product designation from FDA, which allows us eligibility for priority review of the NDA once filed. So we anticipate once filing to have a six month priority review until PDUFA date and hope to have that uh, by Q4 of 2019 okay. with the potential launch of the product immediately thereafter, which we're already planning. And so that's quite a, a short timeline, all busy throughout this year. What's the benefit of having that in such a condensed matter of time? So, of course, we, we want to be able to bring the product to the market for the patients as fast as possible due to the fact that current standard of care isn't as effective uh, as we want it to be. Efficacy of uh, current therapies are down to 60% eradication and we're close to 90% eradication. Mm -hmm. The faster we get it to the market, the better for the patients and, of course, for the company. So we're working in parallel to uh, getting the NDA filed on already establishing a commercial presence in the United States, having a commercial team that's ready to launch the product immediately upon approval. Uh, with all the uh, facilities that are required to have a commercial uh, enterprise in the United States. What are the challenges that come with being a smaller company and producing all of that within a year's time frame? It has been very challenging and what we did in our strategy was to prepare well in advance mm -hmm. and not wait till the last minute to put the commercial team in place. And we've worked with uh, very experienced people from the United States in the GI anti-infective uh, area and we uh, have people from Salix who have been through the process of commercializing drugs, approving them and getting them into the market. And that's how we built our home office in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, already over a year ago. And now with the pending approval, we have everything lined up in order to be able to launch. And what came behind the decision to focus on the US as the first market? The US uh, <clears throat> gave us an opportunity for developing an anti-infective and helicobacter pylori uh, field they gave us special incentives uh, under the GAIN Act yeah. uh, for developing antibiotics in an area of high unmet need due to resistance. And uh, this is something quite unique to the United States. So it gives us eight years market exclusivity once approved. It gives us fast track designation and priority review and provides the incentive to, uh, to be able to develop it efficiently from a commercial perspective. There's been a lot more um, focus and interest on antimicrobial resistance, the issues of resistance. How are you um, following that and keeping up to date with what's going on there? And how much of a challenge is it? It is a very serious challenge uh, worldwide. So the United States is our first priority, but this is a problem worldwide. And the World Health Organization actually placed Helicobacter pylori on a high priority list of pathogens that require developing new uh, antibiotics because yeah. of the uh, level of resistance that has been established with the current standard of care. So this is a problem not only in the US, Europe, China is a very uh, highly prevalent territory where there's very high resistance and it's also a very interesting territory for us to commercialize uh, with partners. So outside of the US, we're going to work with partners to commercialize the product elsewhere. Yeah, and you're obviously seeing success now, phase three data looks good, you're, you're all prepared for launch. But the antibiotic, anti-infective space has seen difficulties trying to get investment involved. So what's your opinion on, on the market and what are the challenges that need addressing for why investment is more difficult in that space? Yes, it's a challenging area 
uh, both because of the difficulty of finding new antibiotics that have an effect uh, on resistant uh, strains. And the, um, there's also some strategies to keep stronger or new antibiotics as second line only once failure of the first line antibiotics uh, happen. So it's commercial, commercially challenging. And that's why the uh, support of FDA and the incentives provided under the GAIN Act are very beneficial in that respect. If other territories worldwide would also implement that, it would help even widen that, uh, that, uh, that work. And this isn't the only product in your pipeline. You had a few other uh, candidates ongoing at the moment. So do you want to update slightly on what's going on there? Certainly. We, we have quite a broad pipeline of products uh, at late stage clinical development. Uh, recently we discussed uh, the RHB104 product for Crohn's, which completed a phase three study very successfully with a new paradigm of treatment of uh, Crohn's disease also using a combination of triple antibiotics, so with an anti-infective component and microbiome aspect uh, to that. So it's also a very interesting product. And we have some more products coming uh, later in the pipeline for GI indications like IBSD, uh, and even oncology, GI oncology indications with new chemical entities, which are very promising. How do you manage the balance between multiple late stage assets? We, we have to prioritize, and we uh, do that by focusing on the products that have the most promise and are closest to market at this stage. And those are the Talisia for Helicobacter pylori infection. Second, the Crohn's program, which was uh, highly promising in an unmet need. And then according to resources uh, and availability of, of resources, we prioritize the remaining programs. And we work very effectively through outsourcing uh, many of these uh, activities. So we are able to do a lot with quite a little uh, team. And what's the, the future prospects for the company? Where would you like to see it in five to 10 years time? Uh, we, we're really at uh, an inflection point right now with a potential shift from an R&D company to a fully specialty pharmaceutical uh, with its own commercial operations in the United States in a very uh, potential, high potential market. So that could really transform the company and I see that growing over the next five years, allowing us to bring additional products into the market and really become a potential leading uh, specialty pharmaceutical in the GI and anti-infective space. Great, well, it's, we'll be watching to see what happens next. It's lovely to speak to you. Thank you. Thank you very much.